Hi, this is a RGB LED cube kit that I've been uh, playing with. It's um, it's pretty neat. You have to solder it together. Uh, there's a bag of LEDs in it, and then these the printed circuit boards that make up the lattice here are, uh, are just kind of plugged together, and you just solder everything together. And it takes a little while, but you get really good at soldering <laughs> by the time you're done. And it um, works pretty great. They made it so it's Arduino compatible. And um, there's a USB plug on the back. You just plug the USB in the back and you can uh, create your own uh, displays with it. You can, um, you can program in different effects. And it's really neat. It's, and it's very simple. It's all done through the Arduino uh, IDE. They have a library for this so that you can, um, you can program it very easily. And it works really great. Um, and then on top of that, they even made it so that you can um, put your own circuitry in. They have a little prototyping area here, so you can put your own circuitry in. And they have a uh, schematic on their website that shows how they're using the microcontroller that's, uh, that's on their circuit board and all the pins. And they, they even show like um, the pen that's uh, the SCL pin is Arduino D3. And so they, they really give you a great picture of how this whole thing is hooked up. And by studying the schematic in the library, you can uh, interface with it and, and add your own things. And that's that's what I did here because I wanted to make this totally wireless. I wanted to have, run it off a battery and I wanted to have a wireless communication with it so I could change what it was showing. So, um, so that's what the, what I did here. I, I've got a uh, 2.4 gigahertz transceiver on here, and underneath of it, I've got a little light dependent resistor. Uh, one of one of uh, these these little guys here, so I can adjust the brightness of the cube based upon the light. And then I've got a um, some capacitors and resistors there for a charger that I got mounted underneath of it so that I could run it off of a battery. And I've got a just a lithium polymer battery, a one cell one. I wrapped it in black just so it'll kind of kind of blend in underneath of it. And um, I, I put uh, one of these little protector boards uh, in here. And what this does is it will cut the power to this battery, um, or to the cube, I should say, when, if the battery gets too low, if it gets below um, three volts, you're, you're not supposed to run lithium polymer batteries down too low, and, and that's what, what these things are for, is to cut the power to them. So I wanted to test these out, because for a future project, I'm, I want to do that on my own. So uh, that's the, the battery, and then here's one of those transceivers. So, um, so the charger here, I've got um, the connector here for the battery there and then there's the charging circuit and then all these other lines here are basically hooked up to the light sensor and the transceiver. For for powering all this stuff I studied the schematic here and there's a um, there's a there's a fuse here a 500 milliamp fuse and then that goes into an area on the on the border that you can cut that will allow you to power the cube externally, so you can have something besides USB powering it. But the problem with uh, with cutting this was if you if you cut that, you wouldn't have the ability to use the um, 3.3 volts. There's this 3.3 volt rail that this microcontroller will provide, and I wanted to be able to use that 3 volts because uh, this needs to be powered off of a 3.3 volt. Uh, source. And um, so what I did um, was I realized that if I could take that fuse out, um, I could still power, um, you know, starting from here, starting at point number two here uh, with my battery pack. And then the battery pack, there's the voltage regulator inside of this microcontroller that outputs 3.3 volts. It's actually this UCAP pin. And um, that actually is, a, there's a 3.3 volt regulator behind that inside the microcontroller. 
And so if you can power the battery from there, you'll actually power the UCAT pin. So um, what I did on the circuit board here was I took the fuse off and it was sitting right there. So the five volts comes in here and then I took the fuse off, which, yeah, there it is. It's uh, this, little, this little part right here. So it was sitting like right there. This was the fuse I popped off. I, I had a little piece of wire that I bent and um, I, I laid it next to both sides of it and put a bunch of solder on each side and that's how I was able to get this to pop off. When it popped off, it popped up like this. So I just left it like that since it's so small. But anyways, the um, that's how I got the uh, the five volts to not go and power up the microcontroller and the rest of the circuitry. And instead, it's going over to the battery charging circuit. And then the battery charging circuitry goes over here and um, can charge up the battery if it's plugged in. And then the switch that's on the front will send power to the board. And this is just one of the many pins on the board that's uh, labeled as five volts. There's back there and there. And all those pins are all hooked up to that pin right there, that empty, that empty pad, I should say. And so that's how I'm getting the five volts, or the voltage from the battery pack into the rest of the circuitry. And it's powering up the microcontroller, which is getting, uh, which has that 3.3 volt regulator in it. And there's a there's a 3.3 volt pad right right there that I'm running over and powering up um, this guy with. So that's that's the power situation and how I kind of tapped into it. And I, I drew my uh, little schematic over here showing it. So there's the USB coming in, and then this is the charger circuit. There's an LED to show when it's charging or not. That's what that little yellow LED is. And then um, to set the charge rate for the charger, you just put a couple of resistors. You need a 2K resistor on this pin here on the charger to make a 500 milliamp charge rate, which is the most, the highest charge rate that this little charger can do, and the most you, you should do from USB. And uh, then there's the battery, and then there's my switch that goes to the uh, plus five volts on the cube. It won't be five volts on the cube though, because this can only output about 4.2, but it still works okay. And then, uh, I, then the 3.3 volts for this is just coming from that UCAT pin on the from the microcontroller. So um, besides that, the uh, little light sensor that I've got on there, it's that's how it's hooked up. Um, I use the SDA pin on the cube to power the circuit, and then I can read the the uh, the Volt, this voltage divider that's created here with the RTS pin. That happens to be one of the analog inputs. Um, and so I, I just read that and I can turn the power off to SDA so I'm not wasting power, uh, powering that when I'm not reading it. And um, again, you know, the, the SDA and the RTS, I just looked on the schematic here to figure out uh, which I could use. So there's the SDA pin and then uh, the RT, RTS is uh, this guy right here, A ADC10. It's supposed to be analog input number eight right there. So um, that's how I'm using that. So it's pretty easy. And then here's the transceiver, and it's got uh, SPI for its communication. So there's a master out slave in, a master in slave out, and a serial clock, chip select not, chip enable. It has an IRQ pin. That's not part of SPI, but that's just uh, when the transceiver gets data, it'll it'll change the pin state, change it to a low, so that I can detect that and respond to it. And so all I did was I made sure that I've, I picked a pin on the, uh, an available pin on the cube that supported interrupts, and that TXD pin happens to be uh, interrupt number three. And then the other pins are the the SPI hardware SPI pins, and um, the the cube here it actually talks to this particular chip here uh, via SPI, and 
um, I did a little bit of testing and, and got a proof of concept going just to see if I could I could integrate with the SPI and kind of got it to work, but it wasn't great. And I put a, a question up on the Freetronics forum and um, uh, one of the people that worked there named Angus, uh, he got back to me and like not only answered my question, but he was like showing, you know, where in the code it was doing and how the communication with this worked. and. Uh, this kind of acts like the shift register and, and tell me a little bit about that and uh, he even changed the library a little bit just to make it easier for me to integrate with it so uh thank you so much angus you you made it so much easier and um so anyways i'm using the the, the spi pins and uh and uh, like master out slave in is the di uh, according to this the circuit here um so the master out slave in right there is is di, and then right here is uh, di. So that's, that's how you kind of tie tie them all together, and uh, it works out. It worked out great. The um, the transceiver is able to communicate with the microcontroller, or the microcontroller is able to talk to the transceiver. Interrupts work, and, and it's really awesome. The uh, the one trick that uh, I noticed when I was when I was looking at this, looking for analog inputs, was um, they have they have the analog inputs listed here on this 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 pin header here. These, these are analog inputs, um, and then I was looking at these, and these actually are not analog inputs like that A zero A one A two. Those are for controlling um, this chip here, which is the um, high side driver. Uh, it's like a it's a multiplexer, I think, something like that. Uh, but um, it's for controlling the outputs of this. And I'm not sure why they're called A0, A1, A2, because it's the same labels as over here. But these are actual analog inputs, and these are not. These are these are digital outputs that are, that are going to uh, this particular circuit here. So um, I ended up not using using these anyways I used I used some different pins over there but uh, that was that looked a little bit tricky so watch out for that if you try to use them so um, I think that's it the I, I when I was doing my testing I just had stuff plugged in back here and I just had to solder a couple a couple of lines but I decided you know I wanted to make it look nice <laughs> and, <laughs> This is my resulting, oh, look, doesn't that look nice? <laughs> but uh, at least there's nothing hanging off the back now, and I'll, I'll just be able to to lay this here. I might make a little wooden, um, like, little itty-bitty box that this all sits in, and um, and it'll be bitty like that. So uh, anyways, that's uh, that's the cube, and um, my, little, my little tester over here, I just uh, have a little button here so I can send um, send something over to the Q bar. Let's see to, to make sure that's working. But uh, but that's it.